is WKDU Philadelphia 91.7 FM. My name is El Bardo, or also known as Bart Jaskulski, general manager of the station. And this is another segment of our WKDU interview series. Today, I am proud to say that we have an interview, a conversation going on with Valerie and Roby from the band Sweet Trip. This Hi. is... <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to have you guys on for this. I've been really looking forward to have a conversation with you guys, and here we are. This is amazing. I'm speechless. <laughs> well, Thanks for having us. Yeah, We're happy to of course. Do <laughs> uh, so now you guys have a new album coming out soon, but before we go into that, I had a couple questions that I wanted to dive into. Talking about maybe the work that you guys had in previous uh, albums and EPs and building it up all into A Tiny House and Secrets Polar Equals. Uh, so my first question is, is in terms of your music, how do you, because if you go on to read the reviews of your albums, People call it shoegaze, they call it some kind of glitch core, all sorts of different names. How would you guys call your type of music yourself? Hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a difficult question to answer um, because to, I think for me, it, it really depends on who I'm talking to. Um, okay. You know, if I'm talking to someone who might know a lot of the, a, a lot of the influences that uh, that we have and, and that we, show. with the assumption that people will be like, oh, oh yeah, like they, they'll they'll have a better idea of uh, how we could potentially sound um, if they have never heard of music. Um, but let's say like if I was to describe our music to like a family member who's not exposed to that kind of stuff, then I don't know. It's, it's kind of difficult to say to just say pop or electronic pop um so it really it really depends um i think that for me though um electronic pop is probably probably the closest thing uh to describe what we do um because i mean we could say that we're we could say that we're a shoegaze band but i can like i can count the well i can count the songs that i feel are shoegaze like with like one hand <laughs> or like maybe like almost all my fingers um <clears throat> so it's it's you know it's it, it it really depends on the context it really depends on who we're talking to okay all right fair enough i think a good approach as as you were starting off is not knowing what kind of genre you're aiming for i feel like that turns out for a better product at the end i mean given what thousands of you guys release <laughs> right right uh, oh, no, it would be interesting though how the algorithms categorize our music for say sub Spotify or if you like this then you like this kind of recommendations. So the genre um, classif classifications can get a bit tricky in that sense. But I would say overall a big umbrella we fall under like Robbie said would be pop music. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I like that. That's good. <laughs> uh, so my next question is going, going sort of, I, this might sound like a difficult question. I didn't want us to start off like this, but I definitely wanted to get these questions in. Uh, in terms, I've been reading on past interviews that you guys had, especially recently, <clears throat> uh, 2020 or 2021, uh, you guys have been saying how you don't focus on having a specific timeline as to when you finish a certain project. It's when you feel that it's complete, then when you feel it, that's when you feel it's complete. So in terms of the tracks themselves, do you work those piece by piece and you go one track that's complete, then the next one complete, next and next? Or do you look at it all as just one big project and make changes here and there? Um, I will say a little bit of all three options, actually. Um, okay. You know, sometimes we, uh, sometimes we might have a, a song that it's like fairly complete, 
Um, and then we just work on it like from beginning to end, um, straight up. Um, other times we have several ideas just floating around and we just like pass around back and forth and um, try to complete them um, as uh, depending on how, how it feels to complete them at the time. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's, there is some element of kind of like having an idea of when you have a group of songs <clears throat> that sort of like um, have the same relationship and that you and, and that we are then like sort of able to say like okay this is like this is a cohesive group of songs um, that could potentially be like a record or an EP or, or whatnot um, and then we just like focus on on that um, it's really not a hard rule because you know with that example you know we would have like eight songs that we uh, we would have like eight songs and out of, those, out of those eight songs like three songs were completed from beginning to end where like the other five songs are just like bouncing back and forth um they all form a group and then like a month later like another song just like shows out of nowhere and we just have we, we just like feel uh it, you know and if it feels right to like put it into that group of songs then then that group, that cohesive group of songs, keeps expanding and expanding. And uh, at some point, we just say like, "Okay, that's that's enough. This feels good to us." And uh, let let's see what happens afterwards. All right, I like that. <laughs> I, I I like the approach that you guys take on with how you're building your music, how that all comes together. It feels I don't know how to say it, but it's a good approach, and it's I like it. It's definitely something that goes towards what my perspective on things is as well. It's just that building of it. Uh, next question. So I wanted to talk about the new album, but I feel like maybe we can save that for the last as a closeout. So maybe the next question I have is, what kind of influence do you put into building the music that you make, the albums, the EPs, LPs, but not making it music related. Is there anything you find influence from that's just anything, just not music? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, when we were making this record, well, even things like food is influential. <laughs> yeah, in sweet foods or um, we get inspired by like nature um, or visuals like art so definitely not just I mean the wicker chair the peacock chair that was an inspiration for us oh well, that, that chair is an incredible piece for the cover <laughs> <laughs> so it's true, it's not just necessarily music that inspires us to come up with music or sounds. It can be like you're walking and then you see a, a child help a grandfather, you know, pick up his groceries and that kind of triggers something like a, an emotion and it's good feeling. So that's happened before. Yeah. Okay. Or appreciation. Things like appreciation, love of friends, family, and how okay. you feel about people you know. So overall, just a very happy, generous kind of emotion that builds into the writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think uh, I, I, that that is very important to us, uh, even more so than the production side uh, of things or, you know, the technology side of things. I know it, uh, it, there's a lot of focus on that, which is which is cool, um, you know, but to, to us, the, the most important thing is like having a connection, uh, having an emotional connection in some way or another, you know, like, like Valerie said, like a kid helping <laughs> an, an old person uh, crossing the street or, I don't know, a, a beautiful <laughs> garden just outside someone's house or you know the wind just the yeah. wind is just it's it's so yeah, simple even little things <laughs> yeah, 
exactly. And some things are just so remarkable and beautiful that it grabs your attention and suddenly you see beauty in it and you hear sounds. <laughs> But in your mind, you're like, wow, this inspires you to hear sound. And then you go home and you're like, oh, that was so nice what I saw. And you you feel good and you write music. Yeah. I also think that I also think that uh, we we both have also have a, a, a pretty strong bond where we like, you know, we don't have to say we don't have to like say things to inspire each other. Um, you know, it's just like somehow we just like have this energy that just like bounces back and forth. And it's, it's really nice to like capture that in music as well. That's great. I, that's, that's a great response. I think even that energy is really amazing to have just in re friends and family, just to have some sort of person that you're able to bounce off of easily. And it's great that you guys are able to convey that into your music. It's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> It's, it's important to us so whether we do it right or, or wrong then uh, I don't know but that's that's our aim basically <laughs> uh, so my next question is uh, let's see uh, so this one goes towards something you guys have experienced these past couple of years and it's that build of the fan base that big insurge of people that have suddenly come on to listen sweet trip myself included many of the people here at wkd as well it's that grow that we found you guys and we absolutely love it and it just spread by word of mouth uh how do you guys think that came to be do you have any idea if you don't have any idea then that's absolutely understandable <laughs> <laughs> um i do it's mostly word of mouth and just uh like a groundswell of young people telling their friends who we are and the rate your music website that um what other ones mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I think Reddit probably has a like Reddit. some like some of the, some of the subreddit. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then also all uh, the college radio and interviews that we've been doing more and more of it. That's brought a lot of um, more new audience, or uh, new audience and listeners. But really, though, we're the we're not very good promoters ourselves. And I just really attribute all of this attention to word of mouth mostly. Right. I, a uh, recent post that I've been seeing on your social media, guys, I love the the graphic influence that you guys put into your posts. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh my God. Honestly, I... Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it shows that you guys are the ones that are making it, you know, and it's a very personal, you know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have, I just have so such basic apps and limited, you know, skills. I don't know what I'm doing. I just, <laughs> I know I wanted to thank people and, uh, well, I've got this iPhone app thing just... <laughs> But I think it gives a better connection for the audience, you know? <laughs> yeah, like someone suggested we hire like a professional media, like digital, you know, videographer. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, okay, well, if we he does it, then it won't be coming from us. It will be coming from this other guy. And I just figured I'm, I'm busy. So I just did what I did to like satisfy the need to say thanks um in a quick in a quick and easy way so yeah that's so why that's... i just <laughs> use my own <laughs> iphone with basic limited editing features I think, yeah <laughs> like and, and going 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 back to that that suggestion of getting a, a social media manager <laughs> or like a digital media manager or something like that i don't think that will I don't think that will make a difference because we would we will vouch for our lo-fi <laughs> strange looking aesthetics, you know, because that's that's how we are, you know. <laughs> right, no, <laughs> and it's great. <laughs> you know, we're 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 the bunch who like love to go to go to like 
cheap uh cheap stores and just like awe ourselves with like the vending machines with the uh, the little toys and things like that. I was like, we like that. that that's who we are. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to have pros on that's very kind of captivating visually. But yeah, maybe one day when we do music videos for our songs. But for, I mean, I'm like, like Robbie was saying, um, it's, he told me the other day, well, we never even had any in, Instagram accounts or any sort of professional website before. So us trying, even if we fail, <laughs> is at least we now are trying to post more stuff because before we really didn't have want to be on the uh, internet or have any social media accounts at all. So. Right. I'm I... sorry, guys, about <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's new for us this is new to us we, we never really had any media exposure before and we're still kind of like new to this and getting used to it because we're both pretty private people but so slowly we're i mean robbie has five posts on his instagram <laughs> I'm like, i mean we try but <laughs> But no, thank you, Bart, for uh, your um, good words of encouragement. <laughs> I, I think one way to look at it is maybe if you keep pushing those media posts, people are going to know that that is, you know, that is Sweet Trip. Those are supposed to expect and they'll know that those are your posts. So yeah. that's one way to approach it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, you know, like back, back in the days, we, we, we did try to like at least have some sense or try to achieve some sense of like professionalism, I guess. Um, when uh, we're for when our former bandmate uh, Yedle uh, was with us, and this was like during uh, Halika and you know like late late nineties and, and things right. like that. Uh, he used to coach us a lot about being professional and like knowing how to speak to, to interviewers and. Uh, mm -hmm looking better at, uh, you know, in, in pictures and things like that. And um, I, I, I think that that was really good advice and we, we, we did our best. Um, but I think that looking, looking back, um, looking back at those times and like what we're doing now, like this to us feels way more natural than um, going into the studio with a, a billion super hot lights and, taking like fancy pictures of us like <laughs> modeling and stuff you know we, we like the you know i think it goes with our i think it goes with our trajectory to where we are now you know the right. groundswell that we've had um has been because of you know not the media but you know average people yeah. logging our music yeah, yeah. and we so have to like promote ourselves we didn't have to do the like, cover shoots, these kind of professional photography type things. In we were just ourselves, like Rafi saying. Yeah. We, we, it sort of fits with how we are with, with yeah. our posts. They're also like just everyday. We're just everyday people, yeah. kind of. You know. <laughs> just average. We're just average people, and that's that's yeah. how it shows. And I think that <clears throat> people like us have have made. Our, our music more popular so we're I just think so too. yeah great no that's that's great i mean and you guys aren't average you're you're sweet trip um so moving on i want to talk a bit about this new album that's coming out uh for those watching sweet trip has a new album coming out a tiny house in secret speeches polar equals that comes out may 28th digitally and then i think october the record right yeah uh, yeah the vinyl release would be uh yeah okay all right uh so just to talk about that uh definitely the cover I like the cover. I will say, I do like it. That big <laughs> chair is <laughs> the the uh, what's what's that chair called? It's the peacock something. It's a pe yeah, the peacock, peacock wicked chair, chair, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I like how that's the centerpiece you guys are around. The, it makes the cover feel very, like it sits in the 70s, the kind yeah. of aesthetic with it. And I like that. Is that. Does that mean something for what we should expect with the album? Or did you guys just go about that just because that's what you were feeling? <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, I think we went with it because, um, you know, we were, again, trying to come up with a cover and we just wanted to do something different because we never really used to have our photos in our covers and um, we were like, well, there is these iconic peacock chairs that, um, album were very popular as album covers. So for us, it was sort of an easy answer to what are we going to use as an album cover? And so we're like, well, we could resurrect that 70s trend of all these pop stars in peacock chairs. <laughs> so then it was an important important historical um, um, reference too because that the peacock chair not a whole lot of people are aware of the history and how that became because it's not just pop stars that did that it's also presidents and in history it goes to way back to victorian era and it's very interesting so that's why okay we'll use that and we do like 70s romance, um, fireplace, cheesy fireplace music. And we feel, felt that the album is kind of romantic. So we figure, yeah. yeah, let's do that whole 70s um, e-culture, 70s theme, 70s look. Because it feels so cheesy, like romantic at the same time. We just kind of like that aesthetic. I think I think it's a good aesthetic, and I you guys played it out very well. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you! I tried to look as cheesy with my outfit <laughs> as I could. But yeah. Same, same here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of irony in that in that cover uh, that hopefully people would will get like once they get the once they see the physical copy, and especially with the vinyl, I think you'll. The, the people will see some some interesting things that probably would enhance the experience. Yeah. Hopefully, we, we hope at least for us it does. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's more to the code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so talk. <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. Well, I don't want you guys to give too much away for the album. More of let us listen to it when it comes out. But just in terms of the work that went into the album, uh. Since this is coming out now in 2021, and 2020, as as we all know, hit a pandemic, lots of stuff changed for everybody. And in the musical world, people, musicians, artists started to make music uh, conveying just their emotions and what they were feeling during the pandemic. Some even made albums just specifically during that era and what they're conveying. With this album that you guys are bringing on, is this one that you guys added, it has some of that during the pandemic, or is this solely an album going off something else? You did mention that the album does go into love. Does that pertain a bit into the pandemic at all or no? Uh, no, not at all. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we, we started working on this uh, months before the pandemic uh, hit. Uh, we had we had several ideas and we had several um, almost complete well like at, at least like one complete song or two maybe um, before the pandemic hit um, and then the pandemic hit and <laughs> it, it didn't really like I don't know there, there was there wasn't really a need to or I don't know we just weren't we just weren't pulled in, in that way. I think that um, I, I think that we were just very laser focused on the the the, the romance and love feel for for the album, um, and that's that's really I mean that's that's really the core of it, and um, anything that 
maybe the pandemic might have influenced us on this record might just be um, maybe um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going off. Maybe I'm maybe I'm going off on this one. I might be completely wrong. But I think that you know, being in a pandemic um, and isolated and going through difficult the, the the difficult time that that it's been for for everyone, I think that um, somehow making this record made that experience uh, a lot easier to take uh, and a lot easier to experience. Um, so, so I would say that I would say that COVID didn't influence the record, but making the record helped us. Um, I don't know, navigate COVID a, a, a little better than if we hadn't. Okay, that's a good approach. I like I like that spin around on it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I think I think just with uh, the theme of it being love, I mean that can be universal, you know, pandemic or no pandemic. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I have a couple more questions. These aren't my questions. These were actually some of my friends. They were also interested in throwing some out and seeing if you guys can answer them. Uh, okay. First one, this is from a friend, Gwen. They asked, uh, they'd love to know the studio process that went to making your music, especially for the record that everybody knows you guys for, VDC. Uh, maybe some information on that? Um, yeah, sure. Um... Let's see. We we recorded that. Um, well, we recorded that in my tiny little bedroom, and then Valerie's little bedroom at the time. Um, yeah, in my closet. Men <laughs> <laughs> are so men Just very like a three percent in VX Dad's apartment. So it was all in different locations wherever was convenient but yeah it was all done with a laptop bedroom so we didn't even hire a studio with the sophisticated equipment so yeah it's just more convenient for us doing it this way <laughs> yeah, right. we've always, yeah we've always we've always recorded this way it's just whatever we are and record it however we can um but yeah for yeah for for VDC we 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 bounce between both little rooms and closet <laughs> and um it it um let's see it was um it, a lot of like a lot of like exper experimentation went into it um there wasn't really uh it wasn't like it, it, it wasn't that there was there wasn't like a big picture or like an image of what we thought this rec that record was going to be. Uh, it was just like you know we had songs, we had ideas throughout the years. We collected them all as best as we could, and we just like pressed buttons and moved sliders and um, you know shuffled the mouse around whatever whatever and just things. <laughs> And it just happened. It just happened to sound the way it does, just because of that. Um, a lot of curiosity and a lot of like, um, I don't know, like let's 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 replace this traditional instrument with something really obtuse and see what happens. And oh, cool, sounds great. It stays like that. <laughs> yeah. um, and that that has always been our approach to to recording music. Um, maybe maybe something like. Maybe a record like you will never know why um, it's a little less than that because it's a little more traditional. Oh well, it's it's definitely like no, no, it's not a little. It's like totally traditional. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> traditional record. Um, um, you know, but there was there on that record there was less of the twiddling of knobs and being curious and trying to find things, and it was more like um, you know we had like guitar licks and guitar licks turn into songs and because they were guitar driven, it 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 felt more uh, it, it felt more like a traditional sound uh, would suit the songs better. Um, and it's you know and it's something that we're also we're also comfortable doing doing that. I mean I, I mean there there are like two or three songs and you will never know why that could have ended up 
could have ended up in a velocity to sight comfort the way that they sound in You Will Never Know Why. Like Milk, for example, uh, Air Supply, um, I'm forgetting the other one, Acting is the other one. Uh, you know, those songs, the way that they sound on that record could have been on the previous record, but sounding like exactly as, as they do. So, um, so we just kind of shuffled back and forth and um, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that, I think that answers it. <laughs> uh, so I have one more question. This one from another friend, their name is Phoebe and they asked what influences slash kinds of sounds we can expect that you guys have picked up since your last release back in, was it 08, 01, 09? Some, somewhere around that time. 09, I think it was, yeah. So what can we expect just from that going into this upcoming album? Well, the kind of sounds that, um, it has more sounds that maybe, like, uh, as Ravi described before, that maybe lift your spirits. So um, more uh, effects that help to um, bring you to a feeling of um, um, being happy or like like um, feelings of love. Yeah, I mean, I would say. Um, well, um, without revealing too much, <laughs> yeah, maybe right. like a uh, more um less dry effects, but more the, like kind of wet okay. sounding effects, or more um like uh there there's melodic more sounds of like melodic sounds that you can hear. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say too much. <laughs> it's like uh we. We like before we announced the the record, we were um, we were being cautious of talking about it too much. Um, but now now that it's announced, I think we can oh, okay. we, we can say a, we can say a, a whole lot more. I just we just we just forget that we can do that. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, yeah, I mean definitely. Um, like shimmery sounding um, effects or okay. Yeah. Um, like with your twinkling or you know <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, I think that uh, um, yeah, and I think that it's safe. It's safe for us to say now uh, that um, at least for for me, um, I don't know if you feel this way, but like for me, like it kind of falls somewhere between, or like not in between, but like in the middle of uh, uh, Halika, our first record. Uh, velocity design comfort and and you will never know why i think it's just sort of like it's, it's, a, okay. it's a little mix of everything yeah, yeah. um <laughs> little bit of everything that yeah it's sort of, sort of like that little bit of halika a little bit of you will never know why you a little bit of bdc <laughs> yeah and i don't know like like while I said like like minutes ago, I said that it's it, it's hard for us to like say that we are a shoegaze band because you know there's only like a handful of shoe like traditional to me like traditional shoegaze songs in our discography. Um, I think that our, I think that our new record will probably uh, our new record. I think I feel personally that it uh, it does embody the 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 shoegaze. Um, and maybe like a little bit of like eighties dark wave vibe to it. Okay. Um, here and there, I'm not, not the. <laughs> I don't think there are any. There are no dark songs. <laughs> <on the record. laughs> but just like you know, like the. Um, it's very ethereal. I would say. I think this okay. record is is very ethereal. Um, it's um, it's it's low moving because that's that's the feel that goes with the, the the love and the romance that we're trying to portray in it yeah exactly and um and there there was a lot of like there are a lot of hints of to like cheesy um 
like 70s love songs in a way. <laughs> um, you know, for example, like our, our single off of a record, Walkers Beware, you know, that that has a has like a 70s um, like I don't know what you call it. Just like 70s cheesy like love songs. Like, <laughs> you know, things, things that you listen to on the, on the AM radio that's what Walkers feels to me and there's a lot of that in that from the record which, which think, goes well goes well with the cover I think. <laughs> right I think with that track I think after uh, that phrase right at the beginning passes through and the melody starts going once I heard it, I was like yep this is this sounds real right like peak uh, sweet trip you know <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah. <laughs> uh, but I that does it all for my questions. Do you guys have anything you want to say uh, to close out, maybe? Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, our, our new record is out uh, for pre-order. So you can start uh, pre-ordering that. Um, it will be out on CD and digital on the 28th of, of this month, May. And um, the vinyl... Uh, the vital disc will be out hopefully by October first. Um, that's and that's a hopefully. Um, I don't know if our, I don't know if you or, or our listeners are aware, but there's like a there's a scarcity in uh, vinyl materials to make records. Was well, that a problem with uh, the VDC and reissue? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. So that's so that that scarcity it's kind of like messing up with all the labels um, vinyl releases. So. For now, like October first is what hopefully we can we can say that you know what it'll come out. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, um, our the reissue of "You Will Never Know" I, is out, um, and it, it's it's going out pretty fast. So we're hoping to like repress <laughs> another uh, uh, have have more copies available of that uh, hopefully soon. Um, okay. same, same with the uh, reissue of "Velocity Psych like Comfort" and. Um, our single Walkers Beware, it's out there. Um, <laughs> you'll get it. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to thank you all again for supporting our music and for spreading the word. And thanks to um, Bart at WKB <laughs> for also helping and getting to um, us on the airwaves. Thank you so much for all your support and this fun interview. It's always great to meet you guys. Well, thank you guys really for having this interview with me. All of oh, us at the okay. station appreciate you guys very much. We listen to you guys a lot and we're excited for this record to come out. Uh, and I think that does it. So thank you guys for being here. And this is WKDU. <laughs> Bye. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.